Okay, so now on to vowel teams. Let's take a look at the vowel teams tool folder, um, and we can take a look at what you what we have in there. Same same things as the other folders. You'll see that there are lots and lots of word uh, ladders. Tim Rosinski's word ladders. You will see that there are lots of um, vowel team um, charts that you can use. There are lots of vowel team um, words that you can use. There are pictures that kids could write the words for. They um, are um, the vowel teams themselves in charts. Um, there are poems that you'll see that have vowel teams in them. Um, there is a, a, a letter for interactive editing. Um, there, there's, there, I found lots of popular songs uh, that I've put in um, that you could use as well. Um, and one thing I want to talk about is this, this uh, chart, because once they get into vowel teams, they now have like all of this stuff in their minds, right? That they're short vowels. And then there are long vowels, and long vowels can be made with a, an E at the end. And now there are vowel teams that make long vowels. And so when we get into this kind of, you know, complication when it comes to vowels or, you know, adding on ideas when it comes to vowels, you really want to start, one of the things you want to start to teach kids is when they are struggling with a word to read, that they... Um, can, or they're struggling to write a word, that they can say the word cake, they can listen for the vowel, which is long A, cake, and then they say to themselves, like, how do I know how to write the long vowel A? So I know I can write it with an A and a silent E. I also know I could write it with an AI. I know that sometimes I could write it with an EA. Sometimes I could write it with just an A, like an apron. So I, I, I have to try all of these ways and then say to myself, which one looks right? Marie Clay did some research on this. She calls it, they call it have a go. Um, Marie Clay calls it where you say to yourself, I know there are many different ways to spell this word. And so I'm going to try to spell them in all the ways that I know how to spell them. And then I'm going to look and I'm going to bring my reading brain into it. And I'm going to say which one looks right. And quite often, what will happen is that reading brain will kick in and they'll say, oh, I know cake is C-A-K-E. If that doesn't happen, that really indicates a, a, a deeper um, problem. Uh, you know, with with um, recognizing words, and so much more work should be done with that. Um, but so this this chart is is such an important chart now that kids are starting to have all of these different ways of creating vowels and the vowel sounds that they have to start to think I've got to apply that when I'm trying to write. So that's a really good chart in in the um, in the uh, um, folder. The, another chart that I just want to show you is um, that, you know, these are the vowel teams that are the most prevalent in the English language. So they're the ones that you um, could be really safe teaching and, and they'll show up a lot. Um, and um, I love this become an expert in spelling with long vowels. Um, you know, you collect lots of words with the same vowel sound. You study how that sound is spelled and you sort them. This would be a great activator warm up. You find spelling tips, right? Used um, at the end of the word, used at the end of a syllable, used um, inside a pattern I know. So, you know, apron, the A is by itself because it's a syllable all by itself. So when A stands by itself, it's an A. Bacon, it's that end, bay is the end of the syllable, so it's a long A, not backen, right? So, so to teach kids these, these um, rules and have them then collect a whole bunch of uh, long A words, and you could do this over a week, like be on the lookout in your independent reading books for words that have the long A sound, and then they could come together in a small group and say, here they all are, let's sort them. You know, so this is another thing that you could do um, with a whole class or even with a, a, a small group. So I, I, I just love that chart uh, for that. Um, so you have lots and lots of things here. 
to go with to teach uh, vowel teams. Um, here's an example um, that I've put together for you. But like I said, there's there's all kinds of ways that you could think about it. But I have given you um, one, you know, thing. But again, this is pretty general. I would expect that your lessons that you're creating are definitely more specific and you would be linking things. But again, it's, you know, sorting or labeling or making words, doing word ladders, uh, sorting words or making words and try one, interactive editing and try two or try one. Interactive editing is so, 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 so beneficial. Um, dictation with editing, writing down characters dialogue after watching those clips, right? Correcting a song lyric and then linking it to work, ha giving them poems and having them find, you know, long vowel teams and talking about the, what the vowel teams say and decoding those words and then reading the whole thing. You know, you're, you're getting this flow of, of, of the way that small groups should be going. Um, so go ahead and write a long vowel CVCE uh, small group lesson, and then we'll move on to um, the next.